The river flows from the top to the bottom, through a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction. It can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows backwards. That's why people at the river's source, in the past, will never know about those downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river. Even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. But I am also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero. Sorry about that. I have honestly no idea why the microphone went out, but let's read this again. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero. Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. Where... where did she go? June. No, Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover... Oh, shit! Freeze. Santa's got the gun. Guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun put to his head. Get up. Sure isn't about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either. But he just looks drained. Guess he's going for the door, huh? doesn't need to verify to go through that door, but... What's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any number doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's gonna give us? The hell does that even mean? Shit, they're out! Now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. At least Seven's headache is gone. He seems to be alright. I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if this door still opens. Damn! Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. You mean, we're trapped? No. So it would seem, rather. Whoops. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. N no! No, you can't be serious! Oh, but he is! Shit! We've gotta do something! Maybe we can still get out through door 9? There's the red. Yeah, alright, we can do this. You've just gotta... No, it's not gonna work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 is 26. 2 plus 6 is 8. We'd need 1 and that would be 6, so it wouldn't work. Is there any combination that'll work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? Sure, why not? I don't think I'm gonna have any need of them. Need them. Ever again. Well, she certainly looks purposeful. Looks like she's writing equations. A lot of them. Huh. Aw, oh, man. She doesn't look very happy. What? Hey, no need to be ripping pages out like that! Jeez! 
What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that! Alright, at least Seven got it away from her. Maybe now I can look, get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. Two, four, five, seven. We would have to leave behind Lotus. Shit. Then there's no other way? Lotus. Looks like she figured it out, though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! Whoa, the- Whoa, where the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected about as much as I did. Without, uh, if you're not, look, it'd be bad, all right? For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. If there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Huh? Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You don't honestly think I abandoned you, did you? Ugh, you're all idiots. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however... However... I doubt we'd be able to open the door anyway. Even if we were, a were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace. I couldn't... Uh, see exactly what happened, but I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! What is this? Why? The digital route should be nine! It has to be nine! Then why isn't it opening? Just to see, why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. Two, four, two plus four plus five plus seven is eighteen. One plus eight is nine. In theory, it should work, so should what Ace did. You were right! It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit. If we can't get through the door, we can't get out. Wait a minute. The zero bracelet. Six. Or the O bracelet. The walls are way too high. There's no way in hell we could get out that hole Seven popped out nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and stare at a door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. Really? You're kidding me, right? This can't be the end! I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking, what he was feeling, what he had sensed, he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness, was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant. And we were as one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonant event melted into him, and we became one inside of Junpei. 
Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind. Nine years in the future. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. Eventually it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on! Over here! Oh, that was him. That was my brother, Aoi. He was screaming. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on! Hurry up! He ran down a long straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got into a fist fight. A girl watching them began to cry. I want to go home! She cried. I want to go home! Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It has been two hours since the nonary game began. We were starting to fall apart. But just as all hope seemed lost, Light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, he would call himself Snake. Hello, everyone. Yes. Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fights died down, and we all gathered around him. I have a little sister. She's very important to me. Right now she's over in Building Q and desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. He sp as he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. In his hands were nine four-leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is, well, it's difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me, and I hoped these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has, bro has a brother or a sister in building Q with clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Under do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we need to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I told you, and you understand, and I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. You gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually I was left with only a single four eventually he was left with only a single four leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now, don't ever forget. So long as you have that, you will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only very few minutes was gone. We were calm. After that, he ran around the ship for a while longer and opened several of the number doors until we finally found a door with the number nine on it. In fact, there were two doors with nine on them, and we found them in the chapel. We split into two groups and walked through the doors.
before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside-down funnel. For some reason, this room had another nine on it, but this time, it was only one. But if there was only one door, that meant only five people could escape. What are we going to do? There aren't any other doors. He began to panic. Then, as if things had, hadn't had gotten bad enough already, Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. What? What's happening? What did that thing say? That didn't sound good. My brother, Aoi, swallowed hard and answered. I think it means this room is gonna burn. Burn? The plaque on the door said, Incinerator. And that voice said that the incineration is about to start. And incinerate means to burn. No! Help me! Abject terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. Then, high up on the wall, a door opened and a man appeared. He was huge, a huge, frightening mountain of a man, as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. The four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We called through the vents, away from the incinerator, and slid down the hall, into the hall. We came out on the other side of door nine. On the wall opposite of the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother Aoi, Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who'd gone through door nine before us, were up ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. We leapt across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona had slowed, slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized. Oh no, where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? I knew I had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then had I dropped it when we slid out? I had to go back, I had to. But I knew I couldn't tell the others. They would stop me, I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think, I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected all the other areas of the ship. They hid in the shadows, and moments later I felt a run of wind as they ran past me up the stairs. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could, down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran into the hallway and looked around frantically. There it is! It was just where I thought it would be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor, but as I ran toward the stairs in freedom... The door to the incinerator opened, and a man stepped out. It was Hongu. Jintaru Hongu. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Ah, how wonder wonderful to see you've decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled the corners of his mouth. Come with me. 
We have to continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly, I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongu's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No, I don't want to. Let me go. Please, let go of me. I shook my body and flailed my arms, trying desperately to get Hongu to let go of me. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongu. Stop struggling, goddammit! Do as I tell you! He heaved on my arm and tried to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me! Somebody help me! And suddenly, Akane! The door to the stairs flew open. And my brother Aoi burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Akane! He cried out my name again as he leapt toward Hongu. You came back! I cried out. Ha! You're too late, idiot! Hongu threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me on to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the open number nine door. Hongu stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fist clenched. But those fists never reached Hongu. With the cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hongu glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there. But not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. Two asterisks appeared on the red. He checked the screen and tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all and walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later. The double door slid shut as well. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran to the door with the nine. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here! Where's Hongu? He went out the other door! W what? Then it started again. Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit! Man, I knew... I knew what it was gonna say, but... That's one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it. It's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years. What the hell? What the hell? What are you talking about? It's nine years ago this and nine years that. And when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments. What in God's name are you talking about? You aren't making any sense. I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... 
automatic incineration will take place in 17 minutes.